Hey guys, welcome to another Gaging Gadgets Garmin review video. In this video, we'll be doing a full in-depth review of the Garmin Venue. So that means we'll be going through just about everything on the Garmin Venue, including the activities and all of the data sets available for them, the different widgets, watch faces, and all the features available on the Garmin Venue. So at the end of this video, you should have a good idea if the Venue is right for you or not. And then we'll also be doing a comparison between the Garmin Venue and the Vivo Active 4, the Forerunner 245, and the Phoenix 6, just so you can kind of see what they look like next to each other and how the sizes compare. Now before we get started, I do want to point out a couple of things. I have done several in-depth tutorial videos about the Garmin Venue, and I have also done a detailed comparison video with the Vivo Active 4. I will link all those videos down in the description. Additionally, I'll add Amazon affiliate links to the description of this video so you can find the Garmin Venue on Amazon. So let's go ahead and get started with the look and design of the Garmin Venue. Now right off the bat, the biggest difference with the Garmin Venue compared to all the other Garmin watches is going to be the AMOLED display. This is a 1.2 inch display and it is 390 pixels by 390. So it's going to be a very nice high resolution display. Now the downside of that display is that it is not always on as it just turned off compared to other Garmin watches where the actual face and display of the watch is always on. It's just the backlight that turns off. So it really depends on what you want out of a watch. If you want to watch with a really vibrant display, nice colors, then the venue is right for you. But if you're kind of more into just being able to look at your watch at any time, see data such as sunrise, sunset, anything like that, your steps, without having to turn on the watch face, then you might want to look at the Vivo Active 4. Now, the body of the watch here is a 43 millimeter, which is kind of a medium size, maybe almost a smaller size for me, but I really don't think it looks too bad when I'm wearing it. It kind of fits perfectly. And it's not too heavy at only about 45 grams. And that means you don't have any discomfort while wearing it, especially while exercising or sleeping. And it should be good for both men and women. Now, the design of the Garmin Venue, in my opinion, is a very stylish, nice looking watch. They do have different colors for the bezel and also the body here and the watch bands. This is going to be the slate with black. And as you can see, the bezel has a nice texture on it that goes all the way around the watch face. And then you have two markers at noon and six on the watch face right here. Now the bezel does not provide much protection to the watch face, but the glass is going to be Corningware Gorilla Glass 3. So I haven't had any scratches on the actual watch face. We're on the bezel. I don't know if you can see it right there. Around three o'clock, there is a little mark where I ran it into something and it did actually get a scratch on it. Now I have done a lot with this watch, including moving and working on a ton of things where I'm surprised that I don't have any scratches. So it's actually held up very well. When looking at the back of the watch, you have the charging connector right here. And this is a very standard charging connector for almost all the new Garmin watches. So if you lose the cable, you can buy a new one for about five, $6 on Amazon, no issue. Then you have the heart rate sensor right here. And this is also going to be standard, same sensor and everything as the Phoenix 6, the Vivo Active 4, all the different Garmin watches. It also has Pulse Ox, which is a red light that comes out of here. It doesn't really stick out too far, and I don't have any issues with indentations on my arm or pain right here where the watch sits. So if you don't wear it way too tight, you'll get a good reading for your heart rate, and it really doesn't hurt or cause any indentation. As you can see with the bands here, these are gonna be standard 20 millimeter. So if you don't like these silicone bands, then you can just replace them very easily by removing it right there and then putting it back on. So as you can see, super easy to replace or change them if you want to clean them. But when it comes to cleanliness, these watches actually stay very clean just by themselves. I've never actually cleaned this and it doesn't really look very dirty. I do wear it in the shower, so it might just wash off there, but it really does hold up very well. And with these silicone bands, I've never had any issue with them tearing since Garmin started implementing these, no issues at all. So highly recommend them. They do have metal buckles and everything that match the designs of the watch. They just look good and they last a long time. Now, while this is a touchscreen watch, you can control almost everything on the watch with the touchscreen. It does have two buttons on the right side and they also match the styling. This is a new design of button. It's kind of a longer button and I love it compared to the round buttons that Garmin used to use. They were a little harder to press. You didn't know if you were pressing them with this. You get a nice little pressure when you actually hit it and it's very responsive, very easy to find in the dark, and they also look pretty cool in my opinion. All right, so now that we've taken a closer look at the design of the Garmin Venue, let's go ahead and do a quick physical comparison with three other Garmin watches. We will start with the 45 millimeter version of the Vivo Active 4. So you can kind of see the difference in the design right there. It has a smooth bezel on it, 
and also markers all the way around the watch face, as you can see. Same buttons, very similar design, just a little bit bigger depending on the size that you get of the Vivo Active 4. See the thickness right there, and then the back. If you'd like to see a more in-depth comparison between these two watches, check the description, because I have done that down there. Then when looking at the Garmin Forerunner 245 Music, as you can see, this is not a touchscreen watch, so it has five buttons on it. Kind of a different look. Look at the thickness here. And then the backs, same heartbeat sensor and same connector. Now we have the Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro. The Phoenix 6 Pro is going to be a much heavier and bigger watch, but you get tons of really cool features in there, including maps for the entire world and also waypoints, all kinds of different things on there. Well, the venue does not have that, but it's still a very good activity tracker and health tracker. So you can kind of see the size difference there, the thickness, the, the Phoenix 6 will be much thicker. And then the back of the watch here, you can see it's the same sensor, but the back of the Phoenix 6 is going to be metal. All right, so now that we've compared the venue with three different Garmin watches, let's go ahead and start looking at all the features on the Garmin venue. And we'll start with the watch face. So the watch faces on the Garmin venue are extremely customizable and you can also download third-party watch faces from the Garmin Connect IQ store using the app on your phone, either iPhone or Android. We get in the watch faces by just holding down this button right here. You open up the menu, then you select watch face and then it will allow you to go through all the different watch faces that you have on your watch. Now there are several pre-configured watches and all you need to do is find one you want, then select it, and that'll be your new watch face. You also have the option to select the little pencil under the watch face to customize it. And then you can change several different aspects of the watch face or even delete it altogether. And like I said, you can have third-party watch faces like this that just provide a lot more data. They're way more customizable because you can customize them on your phone. And, but you just have to download them. Most of them are free as well. But you also can build a watch face completely from scratch directly on your watch as well. You just slide all the way to the right and select the little plus mark. And you first decide the background of the watch face. So they have several images in here and colors, things like that. So we'll choose this one right here. Then we'll slide from right to left. And we choose if we want it to be analog or digital. They have different designs there as well. So I'll do digital. And then we choose the color of the text so you can kind of go through and you can customize that to fit your outfit or whatever you want to do. Then we slide from right to left and you can select what data will be displayed on your watch. They have everything from steps, sunrise, sunset, your body battery, different things like that. Tons of data in here that you can go through. Now I do have a more in-depth tutorial into building your own custom watch faces and that will show you all the data that's available. So check the description for that. After you've done that, you can decide if you wanna have a second marker around the watch face. And I'm gonna actually turn that off because it uses more battery life. Once you've reached the end of the watch face customization, you select the top right button up here and that'll save it and make it your new watch face. Very cool. All right, so now that we've looked at the watch faces available on the Garmin venue, let's look at what they call widgets. A widget is going to be a data screen, basically, that allows you to interact with the watch or see data that the watch has collected. So this can be anything from your activities, your body battery, your heart rate, or even controlling music. And you get to the widgets by swiping either down or up from the watch face. So I'll swipe up and you can see what's called the My Day widget. The My Day widget gives you a quick summary of your day. So at the top we have stairs climb, steps, and also calories. And with these summary widgets, you can even select in and see more information about them, including history. So I can see all the history of my stairs climbed, including up and down for the past week, two weeks really, that's pretty cool. Then if I swipe down, you can see my steps and the same thing there, very cool and your calories burned, so this is going to be from activities and also resting, which is just being alive. After that in the widgets, we have your health stats. So this is going to be everything from your heart rate, your stress level, body battery, and then your respirations per minute. So I can select in there, you can see my heart rate. If I select in, you can see my average heart rate for the past seven days. Then you have stress level, and you can select in and see your stress throughout the day. This is actually pretty accurate from what I've seen. People show their stress when they're sick, and it actually does go up and down. Next, we have body battery, and this will show, basically it kind of is an easy way to see how well you slept last night. It'll go up when you're sleeping, and then throughout the day, you use your energy. I do actually think it's pretty accurate in measuring how good of a night's sleep you had. I'll check it every once in a while, and if I feel really good in the morning, it usually does say 100, so that's pretty cool. After that, we have your breaths per minute. Not sure how accurate this is, but this tries to measure your current breaths per minute and then 
your seven day average. One very good use for this in the app, it will show you by minute, your breaths per minute. So I have seen people online actually notice at night that their breaths per minute were dropping and it might be a good sign you can get checked out for sleep apnea. So that's just something cool about this feature that I think is worth noting. After health stats and the widgets, we have your history. This shows all the activities you've done on the watch in the last seven days. After history, the Garmin Venue does have a menstrual cycle tracking widget. I've never used this, but it does have that feature if that's something you need. After menstrual cycle tracking, you have a hydration tracking where you can enter in how many cups of water you've had and you can set your goal. Just keep track of it. If that's an issue that you're having, you can use your watch to ensure you're drinking enough throughout the day and monitor that. After that, we have a calendar widget, which just grabs that information from your phone and then you'll see any events come up on your watch and they will also notify you if the events are triggered. So if you have a meeting at noon, this will actually notify on the screen that, hey, you have a meeting at noon, go to your meeting. And you can also click in, see more information about the events as well, it's pretty cool. After calendar, we have a weather widget. Unfortunately, I cannot get this to work right now. It is a little spotty. And really this will just show you whether it's all derived from your phone. So your phone has to have internet in order to work, but it tries to show you your current weather as well as a weather outlook in the future hourly in both seven days in the future. So it'll show you if it's gonna rain, also the temperature as well. Next we have a the music widget where it can control music that is housed either on the watch and you can fit up to 500 songs on the watch or it can control music or audio on your phone through Bluetooth. And that's what this is doing. This is a podcast on my phone. So it tells me the duration left in the podcast. I can pause and play it and also change the volume on my phone. Now while you can upload MP3 files to your watch if you have music, you can also use apps such as Spotify, Amazon Music, different things like that to download music to your watch and then you don't need to have your phone to listen to music from your watch. You would just connect Bluetooth headphones to your watch and you would be able to listen to music that way. I do have a tutorial covering that, so check the description for that as well. After that, we have the Garmin Coach widget, and this watch is compatible with Garmin Coach. Garmin Coach is a program from Garmin to basically train yourself to run either a 5K, 10K, or half marathon. I did complete the 5K program. It was awesome. It worked very well, and the program is reactive to not only your performance, but also if you miss a day. It'll change the length of the program or maybe have you run a little bit more the next day, things like that. It is a very cool program and it's great that that comes with your Garmin watch for free. After Garmin Coach, we have the notification widget and this will show all the notifications that are on your phone, including text messages. As you can see, I'm getting my Blink camera. There was a motion alert. I can select into them. I can see more information about them. Now there is a big limitation with all Garmin watches if you have an iPhone when it comes to notification, especially with text messages. So if you have an Android phone, you can actually select up right here and you'll have not only the option to clear it, but you can reply back to text messages on your Garmin watch. So in the app on your phone, you would configure some messages and then you would be able to reply to text messages on your Garmin watch. That's not available on iPhone. There's actually a limitation with iPhones where they don't support those type of features. If you have an iPhone, you will not be able to send text messages from your watch. You can only read them. So it's a very important thing to note about your Garmin watch if you have an iPhone. After the notification widget, we have the Pulse Ox widget. And I currently have Pulse Ox turned off because I don't think that it is that accurate. And it also uses a ton of battery life. Basically, if you have Pulse Ox turned on, even just while you're sleeping, your battery life of your watch will drop by about 20%. So that can take a day, maybe a day and a half off your battery life. So that's gonna be all the widgets for the Garmin Venue that are built into the watch. They do have third-party widgets you can download from the Garmin Connect IQ store. So I recommend checking those out. All right, so now that we've gone through the widgets and the watch faces in the Garmin Venue, let's go ahead and look through all the available activities and then the data sets that you can view about the activities you do on the watch. So to open up the activities from the watch face, all you need to do is select the top right button here and then it will open up a list of activities. Now these are going to be my favorite activities. And then if you select the bottom button, you can see all the activities available on the watch right here. I'll just scroll through them so you can see them. They do have navigate. That will just point you in the direction wherever you wanna go. Once you find an activity you wanna do, go ahead and select it. And then your GPS will start trying to find your location. Usually this does not take long. I'm inside, so it's not really gonna work very well. But you can start the activity whenever you want by hitting the same top right button, and then it will start. So as you can see, once you start an activity, you get these data screens that display different data about your activity, the time, distance, your pace, your heart rate, 
laps, different things like that, including your heart rate and the zone of your heart rate. All of this is completely customizable. And to do that, all we need to do is hold down this bottom right button and then go into the run settings. So it'll be the settings for whichever activity you're doing. First in the settings, we have the data screens. So this allows you to customize the different data screens you just saw in the activity. So if I select one, we can choose a different field layout. So if you wanna have four fields or maybe three, two, you can have one if there's just one field that's really important to you. And then from there, you can even edit the data that's in them. So I just need to select one of the fields and then it will let me customize the fields based on this list here. And then the fields are gonna be pretty straightforward. You have timer, distance, pace, speed fields, heart rate fields, cadence fields, temperature fields, elevation fields, and then other fields. So while the watch will collect all of this information while you're in activity, you can customize exactly what you want to see while you're in your activities. It's very cool and you really don't find this kind of customization on any other watch other than Garmin. So after the data fields and the customization, you have alerts. You can add a new alert and you can have alerts for maybe you want to stay in a certain heart rate zone or maybe you want to set up a run walk alert. So run for a minute, walk for a minute or run for a mile, walk for a mile, different things like that. You can set it up with your pace, time, distance, cadence, Calories burn. If you want to run or walk until you burn 500 calories, you can set that here and it'll let you know once you've done that. It's pretty cool. After alerts, you have auto lap and that's just, does it count a lap every mile? You can customize that as well to change the distance. Auto pause, so you can have your activity automatically pause if you stop or if your pace changes. I find this useful because sometimes when I'm running, you'll see a friend, so you just have it pause when you're stopped, if you talk to them real quick, and then it will start back up when you start going again. Pretty cool. Auto scroll, kind of like a treadmill, it will go through the data as time passes, so you can see all of it as you glance down at your watch. And then they have the GPS, and this does have advanced GPS, so not only GPS, you have GPS plus GONAS and GPS plus Galileo. And those are just different types of GPS around the world, so you can get a more accurate, quicker syncing with your GPS when you're using it. And then you can change the colors in your activities if you want to fit like a team or maybe your wardrobe, stuff like that. So that's going to be everything within the activities on the Garmin venue. You have a lot there to customize and look at while you're doing anything. Now that we've looked at the activities, I want to show you something called the control menu. So the control menu is a very quick access menu where you can get to information or control aspects of the watch by simply holding down this top right button. So if I hold that down for just a second, It'll bring up the control menu. And as you can see, all of these are gonna be different buttons. So I can turn off the watch there. You can have it sync. You have a find your phone feature. So if I select that little question mark, it's gonna make my phone start ringing so that I can find it if I lose my phone. It also shows me the proximity to the phone, which is a really cool feature. And I do find that I use that a lot whenever I lose my phone, unfortunately. After that, we have this little red map marker. And if I select that, what it's gonna do is start trying to find the GPS, and it'll actually save my current coordinates on my watch. This is useful with the navigation activity on the venue. Well, I said it's very basic navigation. You could save the location of a trailhead or something if you're hiking, and then at least the watch would point you in the direction you need to be hiking to get back to the trailhead. It'll save the coordinates. You can view the coordinates later. If you really like a spot and you wanna make sure you have your secret spot saved, you can do that on your watch. It's very cool. Next, we have do not disturb. So you can turn that on and off. You won't get any notifications. This is also programmable to be turned on automatically while you're sleeping. And then finally, we have Garmin Assistance right here. So if I select this, it's gonna start a countdown. I'm gonna cancel it real quick. And basically what Garmin Assistance will do is trigger a notification to be sent from my phone to any emergency contacts I have configured on my phone. So maybe relatives, spouse, things like that. It'll send out an emergency message to them, letting them know that you need help. I do have an in-depth tutorial in the description about Garmin assistance and incident detection, but basically it's a way for your watch to notify people if something happens. We can take a closer look at both of them by just holding down this bottom button down here to open up the menu on the watch, and then going down and selecting the gear to get in the settings, and then we can go down 
to safety and tracking. If I select safety and tracking, you can see incident detection, assistance, and then emergency contact. So these are the emergency contacts I configured on my phone in the app. Now incident detection, it's important to note, is only available on three different activities on the venue. So you have run, walk, or bike. If you're doing one of those activities, if you're in the activity and it's on, and you fall, the watch detects a fall, it will start a countdown that then you can turn off. And if it reaches the end of that countdown, it'll send the message out to your family. The message also includes your location. So it's very helpful for those kind of things. Now, incident detection does not work all the time. So maybe if you wanted to use it for an elderly person, they'd have to have one of these activities running all the time, which would use up the battery like crazy. So it's just not feasible. Now, at any point on your watch, you can always trigger Garmin assistance by just holding down this button up here in the top right for five seconds. So I'll go ahead and do that so you can see what it looks like. So it's gonna start counting down. I'm gonna cancel that real quick so I don't freak out my family. So say you're walking somewhere or something like that, you get scared, you can always trigger that and it'll start doing it on its own and it'll let people know that you need help and it'll give them the, your location. After that, you have different quick links to the brightness on the watch, different stopwatch, things like that. You can also lock the watch face so that nothing can be changed on the menu or the buttons. So after the control menu, I wanna show you what's called shortcuts. So on your watch face right here, you can swipe up and down to see the widgets, but you can also have an item be shown if you swipe from left to right. So for me, that's gonna be the music controls. But if we go into the menu here, you can see all the different options you have there in shortcuts. So you can have your save location come up, music controls, your alarms, stopwatch, timer, brightness, your wallet. So if you're using Garmin wallet to pay for things, you can do that on your watch and you bring it up very quickly with that option and then you can disable it. So it's pretty customizable and it's just a quick way to get to something. I do like it. They added it with the View Active 4 in the venue and I found it very useful. Now, before we wrap this up, I do wanna show you an example of what the alarms look like when they go off on the watch. I get a lot of questions about that. So the alarm has just gone off and it is vibrating on the watch. So no noise coming out of anything, but the vibration is what will wake you up. You can snooze by swiping up or you can turn it off. So I'll just snooze real quick. And as you can see, it will snooze for 10 minutes automatically. Now you can't change the length of time there, but you can at least snooze the alarm if you want to. Now one downside of the Garmin venue is the display always turns off. As you can see right here, they do have an always on mode and it only works on the built-in watch faces, but it will display the time. And if you have a calendar set up, it'll also show the date as well. So it's just going to be a very faint time on the watch face. Now it is kind of glitchy. As you can see, it's no longer showing it. So it's not really something you can count on. If you want the always on display, I recommend the Garmin Vivo Active 4. Now quickly, I wanna talk about my experience with the Garmin venue. First, let's talk about the battery life. Now they do recommend up to five days. That is pretty accurate depending on the brightness level you have on the screen and also your activities that you're using. If you're doing three to two activities a week, you're gonna be down to about three days. Now, and if you have the always on display turned on, you'll be down to two days of battery life out of the Garmin venue. While most Garmin watches get around six to seven days, the AMOLED display really eats away at that and brings it down to five max. So it's just something to think about. It's still a pretty good battery life for a smartwatch. Now, when it comes to GPS accuracy, I haven't noticed any issues with it tracking my location when I'm doing an activity or with the amount of time it takes for it to actually sync up with GPS. For a little watch like this, it works very well. I haven't had any issues. Now, with the activity tracking, such as your steps, stairs climbed, or even the heart rate monitor, those all seem to be very accurate for a sensor that's gonna be located on your wrist. When it comes to sleep tracking, the Garmin watches are definitely lacking when compared to a Fitbit. Now this does do a good job of tracking like when you go to sleep at night and when you wake up. I haven't had a lot of issues there, but it will not track naps during the day. And then the sleep tracking with the type of sleep or deep sleep, that seems to be inaccurate. So what I just use is the body battery to kind of gauge how well I slept the night before. All right, so that was a full overview of the Garmin Venue. If you have any questions about this watch, leave a comment below, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to see more Garmin Venue tips and tutorial videos, check the links in the description. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to my channel, Gaging Gadgets, for more gadget reviews and tech tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.